Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sophie and this channel is just documenting my journey to get a diagnosis as to what is wrong with me and hopefully eventually my recovery from whatever it is. So today I just wanted to sort of extrapolate on how I ended up on oxygen and a little bit more about that. So like I said, I was first hospitalized in April of 2020 with bilateral pneumonia. And after that, when I got home for a few days, I felt better, but then I started getting really short of breath doing things, especially walking up the stairs. So I let my doctor know, and for months I was just told I was deconditioned from the pneumonia and I just needed to build up my exercise tolerance. So I would get on my uh, a, like little exercise bike and I'd do like five minutes and then I would need to sleep like 12 to 18 hours for like days on end. And then I would again get on the exercise bike for maybe 10 minutes and then I would need to sleep again. And so this sort of went on for months, just trying to exercise and then needing a ton of sleep. And I kept telling my doctor it wasn't getting any better. I specifically remember one time coming up from the basement, um, just walking, I wasn't carrying anything. I went from the basement to the second floor and being so short of breath, I literally had to like bend over my dresser and like try to catch my breath. And I had a friend over at the time and they were like rubbing my back, asking me if I was okay. Uh, I was really dizzy, really lightheaded. And I just remember like knowing like this isn't deconditioning, like something is wrong. So when I was finally hospitalized again in September of 2020, I again was telling them I was short of breath with activity and they finally did a walking pulse ox. So with a pulse ox on my finger, they were having me walk back and forth in the room. And the first time I think it dropped to like the upper 80s or so. And the doctor was like, oh, well, you have Raynaud's, which is where your fingers get really cold because of circulation issues. So he's like, that's probably not right. So we did it again the next day and I kept walking until it was like in the mid, low to mid 80s. And again, they're like, oh, your hands are really cold. It's probably not right. We'll do it again, only now we're going to put the pulse ox on your ear. So the next day with the pulse ox on my ear, I again walked back and forth in the room and I kept walking until my oxygen dropped to 80. And at that point I was getting lightheaded and starting to see spots and told the tech like, I'm going to stop now. I'm getting really lightheaded. I don't want to pass out. So at that point, the... That day the resident or the doctor came in and was like, well, your oxygen drops, but you look okay. Your oxygen's fine at rest. I don't think you need to go home on oxygen. So I had talked to the pulmonologist that day and when he came back, he's like, you obviously need home oxygen um, to wear when you're active, when you're doing stuff. So that's how I ended up with home oxygen. And that was like September, 13th or 14th of 2020. So I came home on oxygen and I've had the home oxygen ever since. Um, I haven't always worn it. So before, when I was first um, sent home from the hospital, I was told to just wear it with activity. So I would wear it during the day and at night I would turn it off. And then I was getting the doctors telling me like, oh, your oxygen's fine at rest. You probably don't need it. You should probably re try to wean yourself off of it. You're deconditioned. You just need to build up your exercise tolerance. So I stopped wearing it at home. So at, originally I had those annoying green tanks that everyone's well aware of to take with me when I was out and about. And when I come in from like grocery shopping, I have a flight of stairs to get into my kitchen. While carrying groceries, while carrying a green tank up and down the stairs, wasn't really practical. So I was ending up bringing in the groceries without any oxygen and it was really, 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 really difficult. So in October or late September of 2020, I asked my pulmonologist if he would give me an order for an oxygen concentrator, 
which is what you saw in the last video. And he was a little reluctant saying, well, what if I can figure this out and I can have you fixed in a couple months? And I said, still, like, it's really difficult bringing groceries in. I feel like I'm going to pass out. I really think it would help me. So he did prescribe it, and I got one. And the world of difference it made. Um, it's still really hard bringing groceries in. I get really short of breath. And it's always a decision between do I want to make a few really heavy loads and be out of breath, or do I want to make more lighter loads but then have to deal with the stairs more and I normally choose the heavier loads fewer times just because the stairs are so incredibly difficult um so that's how I ended up with my portable oxygen concentrator and ever since I basically don't wear it at home and I was only wearing it when I was out and about on my portable so, as I said in my part three video, the latest pulmonologist I saw in September, October, one of those months, it all blends. I'm always going to doctor appointments. So he said I should be wearing it basically when I'm exerting myself and when I'm sleeping because I had checked and my oxygen was dropping into the mid to upper 80s when I was sleeping without oxygen. So, when I started wearing it, I basically then started wearing it just all the time because it's easier to just keep it on than putting it on and taking it off every time I need to do something around the house. So since I started wearing it all the time, I'm like a new person. I'm not having to sleep 12 or more hours a day. My thinking is clearer. My memory is better. My complexion is better. If I can figure it out, I'll put a picture somewhere on the screen of what my complexion was like before I was wearing the oxygen and what it is like when I'm wearing the oxygen and it is quite a dramatic difference. Um, so just for educational purposes, because I know a lot of the nurses I've run into aren't aware of these things, there are multiple lengths of oxygen nasal cannulas. They come in four and seven feet. They also have different softnesses for the part that's on your face. Um, I'm currently attached to a seven foot super soft, which isn't all that soft compared to the ones that came with the portable oxygen concentrator, but I can't find those. So these are the softest I can find. And this is what I wear around the house. And this is what I sleep in, because it is the softest. The ones from the hospital tend to be really hard they tend to be as hard as the regular tubing, and that's really uncomfortable to sleep in. Um, the nasal prongs often come in different, um, I can't think of the word, but they're shaped differently in the bend and in the length, so that's also a difference you can look out for. I tend to prefer the ones that are shorter and straighter than the ones that are longer and curved. And that's just what's comfortable for me. Then when it comes to extension tubing. Oh boy. So I do have the purple tubing that is supposed to kink less. And I can verify, at least in my experience, it does kink less than the normal tubing that people are used to. And I also bought a different adapter that twists, so that is helping keep the kinks out. So now it just sort of is supposed to roll with the tubing instead of roll the entire tubing like the normal connector does. So that's going to be it for today. I know this was a longer video, but I just wanted to sort of extrapolate on how I ended up on oxygen. Um, if anyone can relate to the doctors sort of dismissing you, saying that you're just deconditioned and out of shape, please keep advocating for yourself. You know your body best, and I know it's really frustrating, but we just have to do what we have to do to get the care that we need. So again, that's going to be it for today, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!